Hello, welcome to the Fox. The Fox Theater was built in 1929. It's a beautiful National Historic Landmark Theater right here on Peachtree and Ponce. We're so glad you're joining us today to see some of the magnificent interior of the building. Artists from all over the world have performed here, from the Rolling Stones to Elvis to Ray Charles, Broadway, the Metropolitan Opera, we've seen it all. We're so glad that you're here with us to experience the joy of the Fox Theater. So grab your popcorn and grab a drink, find a comfy seat and enjoy the Fox Theater. I'm Lee Burns. I'm director of the Fox Theater Institute here at the Fox Theater in Atlanta, Georgia. So the Fox Theater is magical. Uh, I mean, you could go see a movie anywhere, but I think when you come to the Fox, you kind of do, you're treated to this grand sense of occasion. People greet you, um, you smell the popcorn, you hear the sounds, everyone's in a great mood. It just lends, I think, to really the celebratory nature of arts and entertainment. Also, I think it gives you that sense of place for Atlanta about what Atlanta was. Um, you know, we're going to be celebrating our 100th year in 2029. We're already starting to work on those plans. And we take a lot of pride in the fact that we're still here. We're still successful. Um, we're still celebrating so much dance, comedy, Broadway, uh, movies, so many of those things that are still happening here on Peachtree Street. Atlanta was not the first Fox Theater. Um, there are many Fox Theaters all over the nation. What's different about our Fox Theater, though, is we were not originally built as a Fox Theater. Well, the creator of the Fox Theater were the Shriners of Atlanta. Uh, they commissioned for it to be built. Um, our architect was Mr. Venoir. He was part of a firm here in Atlanta. Um, but the, the Fox Theater was actually built uh, as a shrine temple. Um, it wasn't built originally as a Fox Theater. Their history here is short because you have to remember the stock market crashed after the construction, after opening, and Mr. Fox took over the, the operation as a theater. Um, but they now have a home down on Ponce de Leon, not far, maybe less than a half a mile from us. So the Fox Theater opened on Christmas Day in um, 1929, and the movie was Steamboat Willie. Um, we also had the Sun Kissed Beauties, which were dancers that appeared on stage and um, people lined up around the block. Um, it was a big deal for us. We still have quite a festive Christmas. We celebrate with a concert, uh, piano from Mighty and Mo, and then a Christmas film. Fox Theater offers hundreds of performances a year, concerts, comedy, dance, um, of course, Broadway across America, our, our largest probably gathering of people from all over the Southeast who come to see these amazing Broadway shows. Um, but we also um, have speakers that come, people that are having book signings. Uh, it just runs the whole perspective of arts and entertainment. We've had amazing historic performances, everything from Elvis, uh, Ray Charles, the Rolling Stones. Many people probably remember REM began their you know, their career here with us, the Indigo Girls, a lot of amazing local Georgia talent. And then um, the Metropolitan Opera has such a history at the Fox Theater. That was a season every year annually that we had. I think really the Fox is special is because it's, it's the last really remaining grand movie palace in Atlanta. Um, it's also though a place that has so many memories for Fox Theater citizens. Um, you know, people that have come here to hear opera, people that have come here for movies. There's no major artist that hasn't played at the Fox. Pre-COVID, we would have uh, many, conf many concerts. Uh, we're building back up. I think our record was about 250 performances a year. I'd say we'll be back up there probably within six months. In our ballrooms, we have proms, we have you know weddings, bar mitzvahs, corporate events, and uh, we also have our beautiful marquee club that we're sitting in right now, which is a club that's open before performances and after. The Marquee Club is so impressive. It's a $10 million um, project. It's the largest adaptive reuse project we've ever had at the Fox. It's 10,000 square feet. It's every level. It even has the beautiful rooftop terrace. Uh, we sell memberships for people to come and enjoy an hour and a half before, an hour after you get food, um, designated parking, um, non-alcoholic beverages, and your own restrooms, um, your own entrance into the auditorium for the show. You also can buy a one-day membership, so you don't have to be a member every day. You can buy a one-day add-on. The architecture really is inspired by the Middle East. 
um, many themes um, throughout, Moroccan, um, Egyptian. Um, you have to remember at the time of the Fox Theater construction, Howard Carter had really, um, you know, he had just unearthed the tombs in Egypt and the whole country was kind of in a state of Egyptomania and you see those themes play out a lot at the Fox. There's two areas of the Fox Theater that are highly significant for Egyptian revival. One is the Egyptian ballroom and one is the ladies' mez restroom. They're both heavily influenced by Egyptian life. Um, the scenery that you'll see, um, one on the interior is almost like the tomb and um, they're just lovely, but they take so much pride really in the fabrics and in the painting and all of those things are kept in place. I think for me, um, the sky above me um, will never lose its interest, its wonder, its glamour. Um, to come in back into light and see the night sky when you almost have a passage through the fox, the twinkling stars, and then the background also of our suspended plaster ceiling. A lot of people look up and think that that's actual fabric, but that's actually suspended plaster that hangs over the balcony and uh, we, that was restored in 2020. It's really the first time in our history. So those two things for me in here really stand out is what makes it most beautiful. So the original entrance to the Fox in the design phase would have been on Ponce de Leon, but the designs were altered before construction and the Peachtree Arcade is our main entrance. So the Fox is a, is a nonprofit. Um, we're governed by a board and we oversee the day-to-day -day operation of the Fox Theater. We have a staff of about 60 full-time people. Fox Theater Institute is part of the Fox Theater and since 2008 the Fox Theater has paid it forward to communities around our state. Uh, so far we've given away about 2.7 million dollars and historic grants to theaters all over the Southeast. We also have an education program called Fox in a Box, which is for K through five children. It's free. Um, it can be either in the classroom or virtually. I think uh, coming to the Fox post COVID even more so emphasizes that need to be out with people experiencing the performing arts, uh, to put your phone down, to look up, to look around you, to take in the beautiful the beautiful setting that you're in and enjoy those times. It's so important now more than ever, I think, to experience those things in community. Mm -hmm.